share my screen just to kind of go over a couple of things before the workshop. We are recording this, so you will have access to this after um, today. Uh, so you can always refer back to this if you need. Um, and if you could all do me a favor right now and type in your name uh, into the chat, and that's the way that we're going to take attendance. Um, so if you could do that right now, I'd super appreciate it. I'll remind you again at the end, but um, just want to put that out there. Cool. Any questions? Um, you can type them into the chat box. I will get back to them or you can wait till the end. Totally up to you. Um, but let me share my screen. Um, okay, cool. So today what we're gonna be going over is um, essentially the course that you all are enrolled in already uh, for the summer, which is SWE 275P. Um, so we have this meeting because essentially it is an online sort of self-directed course, but there are some expectations that we have in terms of assignments. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of go over quickly how to maximize your summer experience because um, you know you all are going to have some type of experience this summer and it's important to kind of conceptualize and think about what that may look like. So that's kind of the overview of what we're going to do. So again, as we said, we're gonna go over grading. Um, we're gonna go over the assignments that you will have and we're going to go over the due dates. Again, don't worry so much about having to write all of this down. Um, you, I'll show you a lots of different places that you will be reminded of all of these due dates and be able to refer back to this and um, other places in terms of the assignments. And then we're going to talk about how to maximize your experience to increase chances of full-time conversion and full-time employment. And not necessarily just a return offer for an internship, but also things that you should consider for any type of experience that you have this summer that will increase your chances to get full-time employment after you graduate. Which is kind of crazy that we're already thinking about graduation, but it's sooner than you think but also how to incorporate course assignments during the experience to help you as you start prepping for your full-time job search and what to do before, during, and after. So kind of a course overview. So again, you all are already enrolled um, in uh, 275P. Um, this will be for summer session one and summer session two. So that's why when you potentially see your, your course list, you'll see those two right there. Um, grading, uh, it will either be satisfactory or unsatisfactory. And all student assignments must be completed to receive a satisfactory grade. And we're going to go over why I say student assignments. Um, an SU grade will not affect overall GPA, but it will show an S or a U on transcript. So it is an important course. You all are required to take it. Um, so just kind of information when it comes to that. If you need any questions or support, um, contact me. I am sort of the point of contact for a lot of the assignments. Um, and Krista is the, the faculty director. She is listed as the instructor on record, Professor Lope. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, direct them to me. And I, if I need to uh, reach out to anybody else, I will make that appropriate referral. But um, if there is any questions, I will be here all summer. Um, so, you know, I will be there to support you and you will definitely be getting emails from me. Um, nice little reminders about these things. So that's kind of the course overview. Okay. So kind of the goals and objectives, the goals and objectives of, of this course are, we're, we don't want to do this course just because. We obviously want this to be beneficial for you. So we really have kind of created assignments that are designed to encourage you reflecting on your strengths um, and professional technical skills and potentially increasing your chances of converting into a full-time hire or preparing for your full-time job search. 
And these are through three things. It's from timely and purposeful communication. So we really want you to be able to communicate with your supervisor. But we also understand that some of those things can be hard, especially if your experience, whether it be an internship or a project, doesn't have uh, sort of assignments or structure built in to encourage communication. So that's why some of these assignments, which you will see, encourages communication between you and your supervisor. Also, um, clear and calibrated expectations. So again, we want you to have an experience that you'll be able to kind of look back at your experience and say, this is what I did. And this is not only just for you to understand just how much you accomplished over the summer, but it also is helpful when you're prepping for a full-time job search to be able to say, I accomplished these things. And these are things that you can bring up and put on your resume and in an interview type situation. And then advocates advocacy from an internal network. Again, how do you network? Um, how do you build a network? And particularly um, in, a, in a virtual world, which I know some of your experiences may be, you know, the idea that some of these assignments are going to encourage you to potentially network with um, some, of your, some of your peers or other individuals at your sites or experiences. So that's are the goals and objectives. So again, kind of to show you that we really kind of thought this in mind to help you in terms of your overall career development, but to also make sure that your summer experience, you know, is, is worthwhile in terms of you have something at the end of it. Okay. All right, so now we're getting to the assignments, okay? Um, and again, you do not have to write all this down, this PowerPoint, uh, will be uploaded and everything like that. But one thing that I do really want to show you is the M Suite internship page. Um, and I'm actually going to um, go there right now to kind of show you. So let me just stop screen for a second. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and then give me one second. So if you go to um, hopefully you have all this site bookmarked, the uh, software and master of software engineering site, so msuite.ics.uci.edu. If you go to careers, you have the um, SWE 275P summer course. So this has been all updated, and this is going to list all of the assignments that you have uh, for the summer, um, and the links that you will need to access some of these assignments, okay? So one thing, you know, while I said you don't need to write down all these assignments, you do have a syllabus or at least an overall course description. Um, so that's linked here. And then all of these um, forms are going to be links that you're going to access through this page. So really my suggestion is to bookmark this page now so that you can always refer back to it over the course of the summer because I guarantee you, you are going to come back to it. Um, so again, this is going to have a lot of the links that I'm going to describe in the PowerPoint, but this should be a website that you are familiar with. It is all updated. Um, so it is all ready to go for your experience. Let me just hop back to the PowerPoint. Cool. So again, um, you know, bookmark this page, the link's right here, and continue to refer back to it. Okay, so these are actually all, this is part of the list of the student assignments, and there's a second page to that. But what I want you to know is that there are two types of assignments um, in this course. One is the student assignment and one is the employer assignment. And we'll get to what the employer assignment means, but the student assignment, which are the ones that we're going over right now, these are the ones that must be submitted by the time of the due date in order for you to receive a satisfactory grade in this course, okay? Um, and it will, be, it will be your responsibility to inform your supervisor or mentor of due dates, um, particularly things that they may want to see, but it is your responsibility to submit these by the due dates in order for you to receive them. These are the ones that must be submitted. 
we'll go through these in greater detail, um, but this is a general overview. So one is code setup, which you'll be on code and you will create an experiential learning. Um, which gives us some internship or employer information, supervisor information, et cetera. There's the risk and consent form, which is basically just general internship or project information, emergency contact information. Um, then there's the internship learning plan, which is, again, we talked about setting clear goals and expectations. This is going to be the document and the assignment that is going to assist you in doing that and really spells out things that you should consider. Um, so again, identifying goals, strengths and developmental needs, um, and it's a working document that you will be able to take after your internship or your experience in order for you to, again, have that tangible something at the end. We want you to complete an informational interview. Um, that is whether somebody inside or outside your team, and this will be entered in the reflection in your mid midpoint internship evaluation or midpoint evaluation. Um, again, then there's the midpoint experience evaluation, internship, and we use internship kind of interchangeably to either talk about your general overall experience, um, and it's basically for you just to reflect on what's kind of happening. Um, so it's the midpoint after summer session one, um, and you're going to assess how you believe you are doing. After that, there's also the midpoint technical report. So you will be sending something to Professor Lopes. So it's essentially a one or two page summary of what you have done in the first half of your internship from a technical perspective. And we'll get into that in a bit more detail later. Um, then you're going to update your resume and upload it to um, code in preparation for your full-time job search. Then there's the final evaluation and the final technical report. Again, so this is just an overview and we'll go into them in a bit more detail in the upcoming slides, but these are going to be the expectations um, for you to complete over the course of your 12 weeks. I know it may seem like a lot right now, but we, uh, create space between a lot of these because we know you will also be busy with your experience, whether that be an internship or a project. So again, um, this is kind of all of the due dates that you need to see, and it will be your responsibility to submit them in order to receive that satisfactory grade. So again, you'll have this here, um, but this is kind of just a general overview. Then there's gonna be your supervisor support. And this is the employer documents that we were talking about. And the employer only has um, sort of four uh, assignments that we ask them to complete. And so remember how I said that all student assignments must be completed. You will not be penalized if your supervisor does not submit any of these documents. Okay, so I don't want you to uh, sort of freak out if your supervisor says no, but what we do want you to do is at least ask, because this is really going to not only help you open those lines of communication, but will help you in terms of having them go over some feedback, having them be able to give you what they think you're good at, what they think you need to improve on. It is for your own development, okay? So while we are not sort of requiring that they do it, we do strongly ask them if they could complete it and we, we you know, hope. But again, just to be very clear, if your supervisor does not submit these, it does not have an effect on receiving a satisfactory grade in this course. But we do ask that they do complete it and we do ask that you ask your supervisor to complete them, okay? So they have a memo of understanding just to kind of lay out what our expectations are for this experience um, to support you. We want them to review your internship learning plan um, and provide you feedback on it. Um, we want them to submit a midpoint evaluation and final, a final evaluation there. Um, so those are the four there. And just so for your reference, 
these are the links that are included on the um, internship page, which I'll just again uh, stop share for a second. Those are all located on this summer course. So you see for students, we have all these links and then for employers, all of the links that they need are right there, okay? Um, so that's what that will be. Okay, so now we're gonna get into a little bit about these assignments. So um, the first assignment that we want you to do is create an experiential learning experience. Um, when it comes to putting it in code. So you're going to enter in here, you'll see this little box says experiential learning. You're going to click new experience, and then you're going to select MSUI internship summer. Um, and then you are going to add in your supervisor, click summer 2021, class year, first year. And then this will, you'll be able to submit this and then your experiential learning will be in progress. Okay, so we really want this not only so that we have your student or you have, we have your supervisor contact information and we know where you are completing your experience. Um, so again, it'll be super fast, um, be super quick, but that is due early within the summer session one. Um, so, Right, you're going to, once you click submit experience, you're going to see, you're going to see this here. Um, you wanna review all of um, this information, make sure that it's correct. And you'll see that this is a draft here, right? So review all of the details, ensure that everything is correct, and then click on submit. And that will change this little draft button to in progress, which is green. And that's where you want to be. So that's gonna be important. So make sure that you uh, ensure that you're not just entering in a draft, but you are ultimately submitting it so that it is in progress. This is also where you are going to find the template for your internship learning plan, okay? So, You'll see here, if you go to experiential learning and you click this, this is what's going to pop up, all right? And most likely, it'll start on details, but then you'll want to click documents and forms, okay? And this documents and forms here, if you click this, this will automatically download um, the template for the internship learning plan that we will ask you to complete by July 9th, right? Um, so this again is just, you can see this in the template, but this is what the internship plan is going to look like. So essentially uh, you're going to read through this, you're going to enter in your name, supervisor's name, the date that you review this with your supervisor, and then you're just gonna ask, uh, answer some questions here. Um, so career goal and aspirations, right? We want you to kind of identify what work you are drawn to, what you're kind of thinking of doing. Um, and then the next box is something that we're going to go over right now, uh, which is strengths. So one of the things that we found uh, over the years is that um, individuals, and myself included, sometimes we have trouble identifying our strengths, right? So we want you to be able to kind of takes an assessment that will help you identify potentially some of the strengths that mean something to you. So what you are going to use uh, to for your strengths is a website called 16 Personalities. And some of you may have seen this before, some of you may have done this, it became popular on social media quite a while ago, but 16 Personalities is based on the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Um, so what we're going to ask you to do uh, to complete this section is to take the assessment. I promise it'll take no longer than um, five minutes. Um, and then what you're going to do is after the assessment, you're going to be given a type, right? Um, so you can see here that the in the screenshot here, and this is actually mine, mine is an ENFJ, okay? So that's the type that we want you to type in. And what we will also want you to do as well, as you can see here, so right, we want to, for you to enter type, so either defender, protagonist, your code, ENFJ, and then three strengths 
that resonate with you, right? Um, so you'll also be able to find your strengths here. So I'm just, again, going to stop share for a second. And I have pulled this up. Just give me one second. Okay. So again, here, this is my results page after I've taken this. What will happen is you'll go to 16 personalities and it'll say, take the assessment. Then once the assessment is done, you will be brought to this page. So you can see I am a protagonist. My uh, personality is ENFJA, or you can put both, but the main thing is those first four letters. Um, and then you can see on the left here, you have strengths and weaknesses. Um, so what we want you to do is to read through all of these strengths. And we really want you to pick the three that you feel resonate with you or you feel best represents your actual strengths, right? And it's, again, it's to kind of help you have a starting point and a foundation to knowing what your strengths might be. So that's 16 personalities. Again, pretty straightforward, but I did want to go over that with you. Um, and so that's the, the third, that's the second box there. And then you can see your developmental opportunity. Um, what do you feel that you're going to need to develop throughout this experience, right? So you can, should consider technical skills or you can consider soft skills, whether that be, hey, I wanna learn how to communicate better with my supervisor, or I wanna be able to do some better public speaking, or I wanna think about the larger uh, big picture stuff rather than the minute technical stuff. Um, but it really is for you to kind of think about, okay, what am I starting out my experience with in terms of what are my aspirations? And then what do I know I'm good at? And what do I know I need to improve on? And then what you're going to do is you're going to create three business goals, okay? And what we want you to do is think about what you want to accomplish throughout this experience, right? So again, you can see an example here, um, you're, whether you know I've been tasked with creating a new website, right? And then what we want you to do is list this business goal, but we want you to also break it down so that it's not just, I need to create a website, right? Because that doesn't help keep you on track. What we want you to do is, okay, I'm creating a website, but then I need to do these three supplemental activities in order to achieve that. Talk about what the expectations are and what are the goals. Um, learn uh, or assess what the current tech stacks are they're using and if they are sufficient to support that. And then finally create the website using this specific tech stack and check in with this individual to ensure I'm on the right track. And then create those due dates and timelines there. We also want you to think about the resources that you'll need, right? So again, this can be a person, this can be uh, technology, this can be anything that you think you'll need to complete this. And then think about how, um, what's the desired outcome of this, right? How is success going to be measured? How do you know you're gonna be complete, right? So, and it's not just, okay, the website's live, but it's breaking that down. So learn the company's tech stack, help identify the best tech stack to support X, Y, Z. Um, and that's what you're gonna fill out, okay? What we want you to do is to fill out all of these business goals and then review them with your supervisor and mentor, right? Um, and ask for feedback. So this is going to help you really create clear expectations about what you need to complete throughout the course of your uh, experience, right? And this is the time to clarify anything if you have any questions. Um, Again, this is a working document. So this isn't like goals can't change or activities can't change. They may change throughout the course of your experience. Um, but the idea is for you to be able to start something and say, I know what is expected of me. When you first submit your um, plan to, and we'll show you how to submit that, the results section is going to be blank. 
mainly because you won't have any results yet, right? This is supposed to be your, your goal. And then what we want, again, I said it's a working document, towards the end of your internship, we want you to fill out the results section. And this is going to give you bullet points for your resume. This is going to give you things to put on your LinkedIn. And this is going to give you uh, bullet points or, or topics to talk about in your interviews for full-time positions, right? So we really, as you go through your internship, if you do complete some of this, you know, just type it in the results section because you're going to be able to refer back to this um, after your experience and really say, what did I do during this experience that you can recall um, for your full-time job search? But when you first submit it, this will be blank. Um, so don't worry about filling that out, okay? Um, and then you're going to do the exact same thing with your developmental goals. And so where the business goals is really gonna be focusing on what you're doing for your employer, right? What they want you to complete. We want you to list, sorry, two developmental goals that you feel for yourself that you wanna work on, right? So maybe you feel that you want to uh, get better at public speaking, right? Um, so then you're going to list out maybe one or two activities that are going to help you with that. Maybe it's, I'm going to set a goal to, um, you know, take on an assignment that requires me to speak, uh, in front of a team, um, or at the end of the quarter, I'm going to ask to do a presentation on something that I learned, whatever it is that may be, we want you to think about how you are developing yourself throughout the course of this experience as well. Um, so you're going to ask to complete these two developmental goals. And then again, the results section are going to be left blank um, as, as with a business goal. So this submission is due by July 9th, right? And so what you're going to do then is you're going to go back into code and you're going to click on, you can see the yellow arrow here, upload file. And once you click upload file, the file will be uploaded there. And then what you are going to do is click submit for approval. And that is then going to let me know that you have uploaded your ILP. So it's really important to not forget to hit submit for approval. Um, because that's the one that's gonna notify me that you have submitted it, okay? And the file must be in PDF format, so don't forget that. Um, so you're gonna come back here, upload the PDF file, hit submit for approval, and you will be done with that section. The upload the new resume by August 20th. So again, we want you to start thinking about, okay, I need to update my resume and include this new experience. Um, and this is a good time for you to review your ILP in terms of what did I, what were the goals that were set for me? What did I accomplish? And that way you can update your resume with the new um, experience that you have. So you're going to upload it to uh, your profile. So again, if you see here, um, click on profile, it'll most likely start at the outcome section. But if you click on application materials, your resume will be here and you're going to click on add new resume. And um, that will be all you have to do. And I will go in here and um, check that assignment off for you once you upload it here. Again, the idea is for you to come out of this with something tangible and ready for the full-time internship or full-time job search um, once you are completed with this. The midpoint and final evaluations. Um, this is actually based on career readiness competencies that are prescribed by an organization called NACE, which is the National Association of College and Employers. Um, and the idea behind these competencies is ensuring that you are prepared for a successful transition into the workplace. So again, these questions don't come out of nowhere. It's not us just trying to ask, um, but it is really for you to kind of assess, what am I good at? 
What am I need some improvement on? Because these are the competencies that employers have identified that they're looking in potential candidates, right? So again, career and self-development, communication, teamwork, technology, leadership, professionalism, critical thinking, equity, and inclusion. These are all things that employers have worked with this organization and identified that they are looking for um, in graduates as they successfully transition into the workplace. So the questions that we ask you in these evaluations are really designed for you to kind of reflect upon that and say, okay, where am I and what, what work do I need uh, more to get done? Um, so that's that. The midpoint and the final technical reports, all right? So this one, you are going to email to Professor Lopes, and that's her email address. Hopefully you all know her email address, um, but you will be emailing these by the end of the day on July 28th and September 8th, okay? So you're going to write a one or two page report summarizing what you've done from a technical point of view. Um, each of these reports should be reflective of the first and second half of your internship. So what that means is the first half, obviously, should just be about the tech that you completed in um, the first half. However, the second half should really focus on what you accomplished during the second half or summer session two. It is certainly okay to reference back to some work that you completed within that summer session one, but it should not be the entirety of it. So you really want to identify in this final technical report, just that sort of second half of your internship or your experience. And these are some of the questions um, that we would like you to answer. So again, what is your project about? How many people are involved? What's your role in it? What parts of the project are you responsible for? And again, these questions are going to be listed in the syllabus as well. Um, but again, we do want there to be that separation between the first and second half of your experience, okay? So timeline. What does a timeline for an experience like this look like, right? Um, so before your internship and between weeks one and two, um, again, before your internship, you should think about reaching out to your employer just to make sure that, you know, you're all set to go, you, you know where you need to be going, those types of things. If you need to secure housing, um, any equipment for, the, for international students, your uh, CPT or your social security number. And you should also think about this with COVID-19 considerations. If you are uh, doing a virtual internship, what does work from home look like? Is there pickup or delivery of equipment that you'll need, all of those things you should, uh, in the weeks preceding your internship, hopefully you will at least know a, a little bit of what to expect there. Um, week one may look like your orientation, right? And then the risk and consent form, as well as the code experiential learning will be due uh, 625, June 25th. And then mostly HR forms will be due within the first couple of days. Um, so just to ensure, this is again in preparation too, uh, hopefully you'll work with your HR to determine what documents you need. Um, but either, you know, bring your documents, have digital copies, because you may be, may be asked for that. And then weeks one through two, you're going to complete your uh, learning plan, and then um, you know, we do have an onboarding checklist um, that is on the code resource library that we definitely encourage you to take a look at here. Um, and so it's in the code resource library and onboarding a new job. And there should kind of be something, you know, right before or the first couple of week, the first week of your internship, kind of getting a sense of the place that you're working at. What is the mission of the organization, right? What's the organizational structure? Because all of these things are going to help you be successful in your role um, because you won't have to find this out if there's a problem, right? So if you know there's a challenge, you're like, well, who reports to who? Who do I report this to? That's where research that you do now on the onboarding checklist will come in handy 
because you'll say, okay, well, I sort of already know the organizational structure. So I kind of know exactly where to go. And maybe I need further clarification, but I have a general idea. Okay. So take a look at some of these questions and, you know, try to assess or get most of these answers um, early on in your internship. So weeks three through six, um, again, do July 9th, um, your internship learning plan, the employer's uh, memo of understanding. And this should also be the time that hopefully you can schedule regular check-ins with your supervisor or mentor. Um, we really do want to encourage you to have open communication with your supervisor uh, to, again, ensure that you're getting timely feedback in order to be successful. Um, so weeks four through five, you'll do your check-ins and recaps, you'll conduct your informational interview, and you will set up time for your midpoint evaluation. Um, and again, proactively communicate your progress with your supervisor mentor. Um, a lot of times, you know, they may be busy with their own projects, but it is uh, important that they know your uh, progress on certain projects instead of just kind of leaving them in the dark about where you are. And then uh, week six, your midpoint eval do, uh, your midpoint tech report, and you want to review these with your supervisor. Um, again, the idea behind the, the midpoint evaluations is so that you and your supervisor will be completing evaluations and you can talk about it together because you both will be asking, will be asked similar questions. Okay. 7 through 12, continue to network, continue check-ins. If you have an intern presentation or if an interview, um, you know, now's the time to prepare for them. Weeks 10 through 11, complete ILP results, resume bullet points, set a time for final eval, and then do uh, the 20th of August is your new and updated resume. You know, and something to think about, you know, you can ask your supervisor for assistance when it comes to um, putting things on your resume. And this is especially important considering that a lot of you, excuse me, may um, find it difficult to accurately describe what you did uh, confidentially or within the realm of the NDA that you signed um, for some companies. So, you know, Get a, it might be something that you want to do during one of your check-ins to say, hey, I'm like writing my resume. Sorry, y'all. Um, so you're, you, uh, something to say is like, you know, I, I'm writing my resume in preparation for my full-time job search. You know, would you mind taking a look at these bullet points and seeing how they, how they respond to that? Um, and it's also a good way for, for you to not forget everything that you've done. Um, and then in the final weeks of your internship, uh, the final evals, um, conversion conversation, and thank yous and references, which we'll get into. Okay. Um, so then asking for full-time positions, um, whether that's an internship or a, a project experience, first and foremost, you really wanna ensure that you do a great job. Um, so how to prepare for this conversation is to look at the company's job openings before discussion and always approach your supervisor first. So this conversation, the conversion conversation, um, first of all, you wanna definitely express gratitude, say thank you. Um, for everything that the supervisor's done for the experience, et cetera. And then you really wanna to speak to your accomplishments and what you've learned throughout the experience. So this is where it would be a good idea to reference some of those evaluations and the ILP that you uh, completed because this has sort of the tangible accomplishments that you've had throughout the entire um, experience. Uh, express that you are interested and excited um, about even the possibility of joining the team or the company and ask if there's a potential to join as a full-time employee. If they say yes, then your response after that is um, ask about the official process to be considered um, and make sure that you do not miss any deadlines or anything that you need to do. If the full-time offer is not implied or not yet decided, 
um, ask about positions that you may be interested to pursue within the company and who you should, who they recommend you speak to, um, to express your interests. So this is just kind of one slide on a very complicated and in, intense process. I will be having um, a workshop regarding this. Um, so keep a lookout for that. That will go into a lot more detail, but I did want to kind of have this overview here on kind of thinking about the conversion conversation. Thank you and references should be over the last two weeks. So again, you really want to ensure that not only you come out of this with great experience, but you know, in case references are needed for a position, um, you know, these are individuals that know your work and will be a good addition to your network. Okay. So you want to thank each person individually in person if possible. If it's virtually, which many of you may be due to the restrictions, um, send an individual email to each person. You definitely want to include your supervisor, um, a mentor if you have one, or other teams that you've worked with. And the main thing you want to do is not only thank them for everything that they've done, but uh, ask them for their personal contact information. Um, because if they leave the company by the time you need to contact them, for example, you won't have this information. Um, so it's important to kind of collect that personal contact information. And then during this time, ask permission to use them as a professional reference in the future. Okay. You may also want to ask to stay connected on LinkedIn if you haven't already. Um, if they're open to giving a, a LinkedIn recommendation, um, or you can give a LinkedIn recommendation to start or in return. Remember when it comes to networking, um, which this is, it's not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. So you want to be able to give as much to them as they give to you, even though you may be in kind of different levels of your career. So you want to ensure that you're offering something as well. Um, so these are all areas that you want to consider when writing your thank yous and asking for references. So just some tips and reminders, um, workplace don'ts, don't be late, even in virtual meetings, um, first in, last out. Don't leave, eat lunch alone. Um, again, if you're in person, it's a little bit easier to, to, to join lunch, but don't eat lunch alone. And virtually, if you can have like a lunch meeting, that would be obviously best uh, if you're in a work, virtual workspace because you get to continue to know and expand your networking pool. Don't post on social media while working um, and be careful with your online status. Um, again, you don't wanna seem like you're distracted or you are not necessarily doing what you need to be doing. Um, you know, obviously if you are sick, uh, it's, it's okay, but knowing that your internship or your pro experience may be short, maybe 12 weeks, right? Be smart about choosing your sick or off days. So if there are interviews or leadership sites visits, or there's a meeting with a higher level manager within the company, those are days that you don't want to miss um, because ultimately that you want to be visible during those meetings. Um, don't gossip. Um, remember that anything you type can be forwarded, and this even goes for chat rooms. So you really want to ensure not to engage in workplace gossip. Um, don't complain. Uh, don't talk. Don't this. This one's a big one too. Don't talk about looking for another job. Obviously, um, it's okay to talk about your career aspirations in terms of what you're looking to do, but it's never a good idea to talk about looking for another job at, an, at a specific other company, because if they were planning on offering you a conversion or a full-time opportunity and they hear you talking about, you know, another opportunity, they may get the sense that you're not interested. Um, even though you're there for a short time, don't get involved in company politics. Um, topics to stay away from, don't talk about US politics um, in terms of its divisiveness. And don't make assumptions or take anything personal. Um, and these are some things that are unique to the US workplace. So um, I believe next week I'm having a working in the US 
a, a PowerPoint or a workshop. So these are all things we will discuss and more. But if you're curious about those things, I strongly encourage you to attend that workshop because um, there may be sort of different expectations that you may be uh, expected to kind of know coming into the workplace. Workplace dues, uh, go above and beyond, take initiative. Um, you don't need, don't wait for more, ask for more. Right? Uh, you really want to show that you enjoy working there, enjoy being there. Um, under commit and over deliver. So again, don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't take on this huge project. Um, you know, secure early wins during the first week. So you, you really want to show uh, your supervisor and other individuals that you're good at what you do. Um, you're successful in meeting deadlines, those types of things. Always take notes. So that means always have pen and paper, even when you are virtual. Um, again, don't expect that you'll be able to remember everything in a meeting, um, write things down. Double check your work. Your, you know, this is work that may affect others. Um, so good work and work without too many mistakes earns trust and helps build your credibility. Um, seek learning opportunities. If there are opportunities for you to go outside the, the scope, right, um, you know, uh, of, your in, of your internship or experience, take that opportunity. If they're offering training or if they're, you know, asking for volunteers to work on a specific project and you're in a good place with your own project, see if you can join. Um, you know, a lot of times internship experiences are what you make of it. Um, so seek those learning opportunities. Ask questions and welcome feedback and be okay if that feedback is constructive. Remember the idea of feedback is that if they give you the, if they set aside the time to give you feedback, good or bad, they care about you because if they didn't care about you, they wouldn't take the time to give you feedback. So understand that, internalize that and understand that any constructive criticism is coming from a place of them wanting you to improve. You want to bring solutions, not problems to the workforce, to the workplace. So remember you were hired because to solve a problem. So you really want to be that solution, not to create more problems to the problem. So be resourceful, um, ask, other individuals, see if you can, again, research or, or, or find solutions to the problem that you have in front of you. And again, take ownership of your experience. Um, advocate for yourself if your experience is not meeting your expectations. So during one of those check-ins, you know, uh, advocate and ask if there are other opportunities for you to continue to develop your skill set because it is your experience and we do want you to have a good experience that will be worthwhile for you so that at the end of it, you have, um, again, something tangible to show, not only in your resume, but in your own skill development. And again, all next quarter, or all, well, this quarter actually, because it's not next quarter, but all, you know, I will also be throughout the summer doing some workshops. Um, in preparation on some of these. So um, look out for those. But uh, you know, these are the things that you should keep in mind for your experience. And, you know, again, you've got this. And remember that I am here for you and to support you. And I'm sure Connie will say that as well. Um, so feel free to email me if you are having any difficulties or struggles or anything like that, um, I'm here to support you to make sure that your experience is sort of the best that it can be. Um, so with that, uh, I am going to look at questions now. And while I do that, I'm not sure, Connie, if you want to jump in now or later with some news. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, David, for that comprehensive overview um, just with a show of, I guess we'll have to do virtual thumbs up. For those of you who are looking, you may not have an internship yet, but you're looking for a project, 
give me a virtual thumbs up if you went into the Google Drive, that Google folder that Krista shared with you last week. Okay, I see a handful. Um, awesome, good, so it works. Just check in there periodically if you don't confirm any projects with anyone. For example, after this meeting today, I'm going to be adding one more new project. So that may be of interest to you. Um, and then as we mentioned, you're free to contact all of those that you're interested in, be genuinely interested in, um, and tell them why you're interested in it and learn a little bit more about them. So we're going to leave it up to you to communicate with them. Um, but please be respectful. If you decide that it's not a good fit, make sure to follow up, close the loop and say, thank you, I've decided to go with another project um, because they do reach out interested in MSUI students specifically. All of these individuals contacted me wanting to work with you. So that is a great opportunity. And you are essentially, you know, if you're a good relationship with them, they'll reach out for future students. So you're essentially help paying it forward. Um, and if you have any questions on anything with that procedure, you can always reach out to me. Are there any questions about the projects, the project options, a folder? I have one question. Do we have to pay for the two units courses? Yes, so you should have, yes. So the fee schedule that I sent to you from the registrar's office, you'll see that you do pay for fall, winter, summer, and then next summer you won't pay. Remember, our program is not by units, it's by quarters. Did you already send that link or are you gonna send it? The fee schedule, that was yeah. sent over the summer with the checklist. It was included with all the list of things that should be bookmarked. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'll, sit it, I'll send it in the chat right now as well for reference. Cool. So I do see some questions. Um, so some of it is what if we cannot talk about our task and then how thorough will this need to be? And that's a good question. Obviously we don't want you to be in violation of any confidentiality um, or in any NDA that you sign. But in terms of the um, internship learning plan, um, you know, we would want it to be something that you'd be able to talk about on your resume, right? So again, we don't necessarily need to get into the super specifics, but at the end of the day, we still wanna know sort of in general what you're doing. Um, you know, now for Krista's technical report um, or Professor Lope's technical report, you know, she does want an idea of sort of what technically you're doing. Um, again, I don't think that she wants any, any of you to break any confidentiality. So if you're concerned with that, I might encourage you, and Connie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, encourage you to reach out uh, to her um, with those concerns. But at the end of the day, all we really wanna know is kind of what you're accomplishing. Um, we obviously do not want to create any problems when it comes to confidentiality or the NDA. So particularly for the internship learning plan, it does not need to be thorough in terms of, you know, breaking confidentiality rules. Um, we just want a sort of a general sense of what you're doing. And the ILP, remember again, is kind of a document that can help you with your resume. So it can be things that you would talk about on your resume and then breaking them down into particular tasks that you have to do. Um, but I think if you're really concerned about that, then you can certainly email Professor Lopes and she'll be able to kind of guide you on that. Um, yeah. Um, cool, yeah, so good question. Is the supervisor the same one for your CPT application? Um, so the answer is no, uh, and particularly because you, you filled out the information for your recruiter. So we would like um, the information for the supervisor that is actually supervising you. And that's why we sort of wait till the first week 
um, of your experience so that you know who this person is? Um, so good question. And the answer is those are two separate documents. So they do not need to be the same. For the code experiential learning, we wanna know who is actually supervising you. Okay, so there's a question about social security. Um, so I, I really, so for this, I want you all to refer back to Jacqueline's email that she sent you on March 1st that goes over the CPT process. And in that, it has information on social security numbers. Unfortunately, UCI doesn't really, or us, have anything to do with the Social Security Administration. Those, that application is entirely set by them. So you can certainly ask your International Center advisor about that process. Um, but I also strongly encourage you, there are two links in Jacqueline's email that bring you to the Social Security number page on the UCI International Center website that goes over the documents that you will need in order to apply for a social security number. I also wanna make it very clear too that you, may, you should not apply for social security number um, more than 30 days from your start date, okay? So for those of you starting on the 21st um, of June, you know, now is not the time to, uh, to apply for social security. Um, so you still have some time before you do that. Okay, so in terms of onboarding. So the only thing during those first weeks is going to be the code experiential learning, which talks about, um, which is really just letting you know where you're doing your experience and your supervisor's contact info. Um, and then the risk and consent form, which you can doesn't, which takes five minutes to fill out. And then the internship learning plan, which we give you a little bit of, we give you a week um, or two to complete. So in terms of, you know, the internship learning plan, I feel, you know, that example that we gave is sort of the expectation that we have. So we obviously don't want this to be, um, taking you away from the good work that you're doing. This is supposed to be supplemental and to help you sort of focus on it. So, you know, it's really just those three business goals and those two developmental goals. Um, so in terms of reducing the amount of information, we'll list there. So there still needs to be those three business goals and two developmental goals. And again, you know, if you give a goal and it only has one or two supplemental things that you have to do, such as I need to talk to this person and then I need to utilize or research this tech stack and complete it, that's all that it has to be. It doesn't necessarily need to be all three activities. We want it to be truthful to your experience. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't need to be entirely full but we do need at the very least those three business goals and whatever activities are uh, needed to complete that. Okay. Sorry, can I ask you a question uh, for Connie? So I think Parker asked the same question that I have. So on the link you sent, I said, so do we, is that mean we don't pay for fall or we're gonna pay for fall too? We will pay for fall. The way that fees work at the university is that they're approved on an annual basis. So later this summer, you'll see next year's fees. Okay, so we pay $10,000 for summer and another one for fall, right? Correct. It's everything divided equally within the five quarters for full-time students. Thank you. You're welcome. All 
awesome. Well, if there's nothing else, again, you know, I promise you though, you will get a lot of emails from me um, reminding you of due dates. So uh, I know there was a question about forgetting. Um, you know, I will be there sending you emails um, right before the due date. So I will continue to remind me. So I will be in contact during the summer. I will be here. Connie will be here. Um, bookmark the uh, 275P course page on the MSWE website. And that has a lot of information there. But again, if you have any questions, reach out to us um, and we will be sure to respond and just know that we are here to support you and have uh, a great summer. I also want to add one more thing to Connie's um, with the project email. There are still internships that are being posted on code um, in the job listings portion. So we do have some employers that have come to us looking for students. So if you haven't looked there, I strongly suggest that you do. Um, if you're still looking um, for an internship this summer. Um, but yeah, and if there's no other questions, thank you all for